Hey guys, it's Woody, and this is Painkiller Already, episode 73. It hasn't been uploaded to anybody's YouTube channel, but I happen to have it on my hard drive from back in the day. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to stick some gameplay on here because there's no video ever to have gone with it. And, uh do my thing. So I know what you really want is PKA-137 and someday you'll be watching this and it's old and 137 will be said and done. But as it is now, it's been delayed by two weeks and everyone's upset. But I thought for those of you that want a PKA fix before 137 comes out, here you go. The gameplay is Warframe. I get monitor smashingly mad later in the game as I can't figure out where I'm supposed to go. But uh, it's really not about the gameplay. It's uh, it's painkiller already. Episode 73 with a little Warframe in the background. Link in the description. It's free. Go get it if you want it. There we go. That should be better. All right. Oh, we told my girls on Twitter. You know, let me go and tell you that story. You know, the four percent of girls that watch me, which is about two percent. You have how 4 that two percent girls? <laughs> yeah, I do too, and and half <laughs> of them are lying, right? Yeah, <laughs> so that two percent that actually watch me, I don't think either, any of that two percent is attracted to a middle age. Well, not middle age yet, but getting the middle aged white male with you know high bill output and low job security. Nice. <laughs> I've got, I've got about ten percent female viewership. So I'm guessing. I think my real stats through Alexia showed up as like six or seven percent, something like that. Females, mm -hmm. which is mm. cool. I, uh, I've never checked. But what do you do? Check the traffic on your homepage. Um, I don't track the stats. I, you know who does? You just get told about them. I got you. Yeah, I get told about things. I have people for that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I wonder what my real stats are. I bet it, I wouldn't be surprised if it was under two percent. You know, I'm I'm solid on the guys. I'm solid on the guys. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who say that it's um that it's the it's lagging too much. Yeah, it's true that my audio is out of sync with the video. I've looked into fixing that. I haven't figured it out yet. And um, but if the, the screen's jumping and stuff, then that's on your end, man. Try lowering the resolution to to something that your internet connection can handle. Yeah, you fucking noobs. Yeah. <laughs> um, huh. Oh, do we want to pick up a like a late guest edition, or do you want to just rock with the three of us this year? Let's see let's, who's on our guest list. Let's. I, I like, personally, I've always preferred the ones when it's just the three of us because we don't have that other person who either doesn't talk enough or talks too much or is just kind of doesn't ha present their own opinion. They just sit there and agreeing with us, or they've got an odd voice or. I don't know. Yeah, they make I've me. I always angry. wanted to get Sark on here. Sark would be a great guest. Sark's Sark. doing something right now. I know for a fact, though. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know what he's doing too. He's he's busy. But uh, <laughs> T Mart, dude, let's um, we should bring in T Mart just so that he doesn't level up too much beyond where I am. Yeah, <laughs> just to like freaking sandbag him. Hey, Wasn't T Mart like our greatest guest ever? Like he said jack shit the entire show. <laughs> Those are conflicting thoughts, right? <laughs> I want to say when T-Mart was a guest, there were actually two guests that week. But, um, uh, yeah. I remember him sitting here like, I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're not going to say know. anything bad about T-Mart, right? T-Mart's friend of the show. He's, uh, he's I, I honestly guy. don't recall. I And it's nothing against T-Mart. The only guest I honestly remember, I remember Pink Ranger because I think she was her first. I remember... Um, was she our first? I remember yeah, she um, was. Two, two bucks was it? Okay, all right, it was pink. I I remember two bucks. I remember um, I remember Joe. Joe. I remember that. Um, I remember sex... my wife when she was a guest. I remember, I remember her very well. She mm -hmm. did a good job. I remember the sex phone operator. Yes, <laughs> the phones or the phone sex operator. She oh, was hot. Do you remember the phone sex operator, man? She was funny. Yeah. It, it, like um, it went back and forth. Right, there were times where she was like. Uh, I, I don't want to say annoying. I don't like to haze anybody on the you know who's been a guest on the show. But there were times where like not everyone was loving her who listened to it, and then there were other times where she was actually pretty darn good. You know, she yeah. kept everybody up. I, I I reached out to her like six months later because I wanted to. You know how Sandy Ravage does that like sexy stuff? No, Sandy Ravage is the Duke Nukem stuff. I wanted yeah. to do the equivalent to a Sandy Ravage game, but with a phone sex operator. And yeah. uh, she wasn't on Skype forever or something. I just never got in touch with her. Yeah. 
So for people who ask how long, someone in the stream said, how long is PKA? It's supposed to be an hour. That's the goal, right? We always shoot for an hour. And after an hour, you know, I, I kind of get a vibe for how it's going. If, I don't know, if it's the best show ever, we keep it going. If, uh, it's, if it's time to wrap up, then we stop. That's, that's how it works. So try I refreshing want, I, the stream if you're lagging. And I got a topic to start us off with. Do you? Do you want to kick off the show? Uh, are we doing a guest or not? No. I'm flexible on the topic. Kyle said no guest and no one else voted, so we could go that way. Give it doesn't bother me. Doesn't right. bother me. Tonight? I think we're capable of carrying a show. I am too. I, 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 I love when get... people. I love when people want like some really amazing player of a video game to be the guest because uh, it's like it, it just doesn't make sense. It's like yeah, he can play video games really well, but is he going to be entertaining in any way? Yeah, I seen I seen your boy Snoop Dogg tweet at you the other day. Yes. Uh, uh, we got to start. The... Oh no, that's before the show. Go ahead. Yeah. I, oh, I don't know. It was. It's. I'm. Might do something with him. Probably. Probably not. He's kind of a safety risk, oh. and he's an ex felon, which means background checks. Wait, wait, which are wait, Snoop's an ex felon. Yeah. Yeah. He, is. he had that. He had that gun stuff. But uh, I was gonna say maybe you could get a contract clause where he has to really? do an appearance on Painkiller already. Because I keep seeing this picture on the internet of uh, Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart saying he one got, of these people is a felon. <laughs> Snoop Dogg uh, was on trial for killing a man, and he also has a lot of like marijuana and gun charges. Yeah. So he's kind of a liability. Yeah. Is he allowed to handle guns? Handle I, don't think, I don't think a bazooka, which is what he requested, would be... Uh, it is a parole See, the, officer's guy. Yeah, yeah. The issue with getting him that, that's not impossible to get. It's not by any means. I I know the company that's making them in the U.S. right now, like RPGs, but the issue would be they're not going to want him to come for several reasons. Okay. Let's start the show. All right. Uh, let me grab my recording gear. Wayne, do you want to kick just... us off with an intro? I wanted to say this real quick. Just imagine what a parole officer would be if you got Snoop Dogg as your client, though. Dude, he'd be excited, I bet. I bet he'd, like, <laughs> I bet he'd be like, yeah, hey, honey, guess what? Snoop Dogg, you know, he's one of my parolees. I've never heard a damn Snoop Dogg record in my life, but I know who he is. I'd probably uh, recognize it, but I've never bought one, that's for sure. I could recognize his voice, yeah, but like I said, you know, you go through my CD collection, Snoop Dogg's not in it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw something I've never seen the other day. I saw one of those people waving the signs on the side of the road, and she was a hot blonde chick. Oh. Did, you, did you tell her that she'd have a much more, more promising career in hooking? I mean, I think that's what the sign said, so... Oh. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> um, no, but I was thinking, and I was like, wow. That's the first like really attractive uh, sign-waving street walker that I've ever seen. Pretty cool. As, and as those of you who have heard me say it before, that's the worst job possible. You know what that makes me think of? That makes me think of like those old like homeless guys in New York that are like homosexuals and they're like raping each other. Just imagine that pulling the pants off another homeless guy. Just the smell of his ass. What, Wayne? What, what, what just happened? <laughs> we're talking about we're talking about homosexual homosexual homeless man ass. I picked up my phone for one second and looked away, and that's where we went to. Uh, you got to keep Jeez. holding the reins, Kyle. You got to keep holding the reins. All right, I think we should start the show now. <laughs> All right. Uh, Wings, you ready for an intro? It's PKA episode 73. I guess I guess we could just freeball it. 73. I think you freestyle it. Freeballing yeah, it free, is totally free ball yeah. something very different. What is freeballing? <laughs> I can freeball it. We can we can work that out. What is freeballing? That's when you run around with no underwear. Oh, I thought we call that going commando where I'm from. Yeah, command. That's another term for the same thing. That's it. All right, let's kick this. All right, no one, five, four, three, two. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Wings of Redemption. I'm back with Painkiller already, 73. And tonight we ain't got no guests because we're going to put ourselves to the test. I don't know with these like whack ass rhymes. I got Woody's Gamer Tag in the prime time. And that other guy that shows up every now and then. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I sure want a can, goddammit. Kyle, welcome to the show. Hey, it's good to know. be here. So, you guys do like a podcast thing, huh? 
Uh -huh, yeah. We do, we do. Yeah, we kind of ask questions. Sometimes we say, like, you know, would you rather? Or, um, uh, you yeah, know, sometimes we talk about video games. Who knows where it could go? You want to start this off with a bang, with a funny story? Yes, oh, let's, do this. Right. let's do this. All right. All right, so here's the deal. So I went down to Florida uh, the other day, and I was supposed to meet with this attractive young lady. And she's saw, been sitting. I saw her Yeah, pictures. I wanted to get that across. Yeah, yeah, all right. So she had sent me these pictures through text, and I had shared them with Woody. Um, so like, I was like, Woody, check this out. Woody, tell me what you gathered by looking at the pictures I sent you. And I sent you several. <laughs> so um, I, I didn't express my concerns to you. But I do know that the position she was in can mask certain, you know, bodily deficiencies, right? You know, the, the, there was like a Facebook angle thing, if you guys are familiar with that website. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh huh. So, um, yeah, like I saw the pictures, but mostly what I saw was a big old booty with some potential. Yeah. All right. So, so let me just describe this girl. The looking at her face, she looked. Wait, I, wait, wait, I was wait, imagining wait. her butt. Let's, yeah. Start with what you were. Uh, this is what I thought I was getting into. I thought I was getting into a girl. I knew she was short. She was like five foot two, five foot three, or something. I imagined her as sort of a short, like white girl with sort of uh, a black girl's body. You know, like like sort of thick, but certainly not overweight, with really really big boobs and a really really big butt. Okay, and that's what I was seeing in the pictures. These and massive sometimes you double see that, right? Like, this is all yeah. going to start getting, like, is it racist to say Italian? I don't even know. But, like, a lot of times, like, shorter Italian women have that going on. Like, big old boobs, big old booty, and, you know, just, like, rocking a, a kind of thick but, you know, hot body in her own way. Call that's them curves in all the right places. Curves in all the right places. So this is, and and you know the 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 body shots were. Uh, that's kind of what you could expect going into this thing. Yeah, I, like like I knew that she wasn't like one of these like pencil thin girls. I knew she wasn't muscular. I knew she was going to be like thick. And no, not Snooky, you dirty fucker, Travi, whatever your name <laughs> is. I saw that in this thing. Not Snooky. That's not fat like that. Thick, not fat. Snooky's disgusting. All right. <laughs> so. Seriously, like, Snooki's got that big poofed up face. This girl's face was thin. Well, so I see her approaching the hotel on foot, and I look down, and I'm like, good God, those are some massive tits. They're, hey, they're like a foot in front of her chest. I was like, God damn. And I start thinking to myself, those were her tits, right? That's, that's wait a minute. And, I, and she's coming up to the hotel room, and I'm like, don't be fat. Don't be fat. Don't be fat. I look through the peephole, and I'm like, fat! Oh, God, fat! Oh, oh God. <laughs> this girl, seriously, seriously like, 150-pound girl, that's fine by me. Curvy, like, you know, nice nice butt, nice boobs, curvy. I like that. I don't, I don't want some pencil-thin little, like, girl I might break, all right? I'm packing heat. Let's just put that out there. So, <laughs> so when I see this girl, I'm like, God Damn, she's two hundred and twenty-five pounds at five foot two. I shit you not. <laughs> All right, and double I'm not chin? a oh big double chin. I'm talking about a, like <laughs> I'm talking about like your balls might get sucked in there. <laughs> All right, I can't. My first instinct, I'm gonna be honest, it was the coward's instinct. It was to run to the back of the room and hide under the covers. Okay. Just pretend like she's not there, but I'm like, all right, I can't be like that. I've got to, like, acknowledge her, because she knows I'm in this room. She knows I'm here. So I let her in, and I'm just, like, thinking, like, what the fuck is this? I'm, like, and the and whole why time did she come I'm, over? You guys had had pretty much a booty call scheduled, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, she's coming over to get some, and I'm like, you ain't getting none. In my head, and I'm just like, how do I get her out of here politely? And it's just, it's bad. She's so large, and it's just bad. And she sits on the bed. I think she's going to break it. And, and it was just, oh, it was bad. And she, and, and she acts like nothing's up, all right? That's the worst. <laughs> she acts like there's nothing up at all, all right? She's like, what's up? I'm here. Like, as if those pictures she sent me were not. Let me just say this. Half the pictures she sent me were obviously from high school because I have a side frame image, or I did, I deleted it. I did have one picture of her stomach, like of her standing there in front of the mirror like a full body, and she was what I described, okay? Like like the, like the something that I was down for, and I've got pretty high standards. So she gets there, and like obviously five years and 75 pounds have tacked themselves onto her. 
And I'm just like in awe. And she acts like there's nothing up. She's just like, hey, what's up? You know, I'm in the area. It's good to come down. I'm glad to finally meet you, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, really? You're going to act like nothing's up? That would be like, <laughs> I, that would be like if I sent you like a picture of my dick and like showed up and I didn't even have one. You know what I mean? Like, like it, it would be like if I sent her pictures of me and like the hamburger showed up in full costume and he acted like nothing was up. It, no, no, you fucker. What's no. up, homie? Want a burger? So, <laughs> as politely as possible, I rid myself of her without having to get crushed or anything disgusting happening. So, that's my uh, horribly Wait embarrassed... Wait a minute story. here. Uh, so, how did you get her out of the room? I told her she was going to have to. She was going to have to leave because I had to get up early, and uh, and that's how that went. Yeah, Any, did it a lot nicer. Anything else go down? What? Anything else go down? No, hell no. I got rid of her. I don't know why you questioned me on this, buddy. I, I, there was, I have other girls in that area that I could call. Bullshit! Bullshit! He's lying to you. It's not true. I know what happened. You told me. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I, did, uh, I will say this. I did not have sex. With that woman? Yes, that's what happened. <laughs> no, 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 I, whoa, whoa, you're lying. No, you're no, so no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm agreeing with you. I'm not. If, if for those of no. you that get the Bill Clinton reference here, that's how it happened. <laughs> I let suck my dick. I'll admit it. I let I the did. fat suck my dick. She was hungry. She she needed some nourishment. I had to. I didn't want her leaving on an empty stomach. It seemed like I the polite did. thing to do, right? It seemed like the polite thing to do. Yes, yeah. He was actually a hero in this whole situation. What, yeah. what he hasn't mentioned <laughs> is that she had diabetes, and, and she needed an insulin injection. So lacking the needle and, and syringe that it would take to do such a thing, he quickly got to thinking and downed a Snickers bar and then delivered orally the necessary insulin to save yeah. that woman's life. Potassium, calcium, everything a body needs. God damn it. I got it. Yeah. After she after she had let's just I don't know how a good way to put this other than swallowed my cum. After that happened, <laughs> oh, God. Okay, she that's... had the string of ten fat girls. All right, <laughs> she didn't even go out the door. She just jumped out the window and landed like fucking uh, Superman. You know, did that ground crushing pose and walked away. Absolutely, <laughs> it was impressive. But uh, yeah, but yeah, it was honestly, honestly, I. I wanted to get rid of her, and I think I told you this, Woody, in our conversation. I didn't want to do anything with her, so it was sort of a pity blow job, honestly. Right, I right. You were only being polite. I felt like she was going to cry if I kicked her out, because I was going to have to tell her why. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I did, and as mad as I was, I couldn't bring myself to hurt her feelings. But complete misrepresentation. Complete misrepresentation. Uh, oh, let me ask this question, since I'm completely out of the loop here. Okay. How, how did you get the pity blow job and then get her out the door? Look at to me. It seems like it'd be harder after the oral sex had happened to ask her to leave. After I after that's happened, um, I'm much more ruthless than normal. So once that was over, there was nothing else to be done. What Actually, you like, what you what were you like, baby? Like, well, I'm only good for one nudge. You got to get out. Pretty now. much. That's pretty much <laughs> yeah. put it out there. I was like, well, whoops! I didn't mean to finish like that. Gonna have to. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what. Tomorrow we'll go out and get dinner because I knew she wanted dinner. <laughs> oh, you know, we'll go. It's and just she a safe assumption, and, right? And as she wipes her mouth, she goes, "Well, wine and dine me." I said, "Oh, I will." So Tomorrow. that was. Did, did you look she, at her? Did you look at her cold? And be like, we gotta go to a buffet place, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, I'm not made of money. God damn it! Like, calm down. I'll I'll bring you up to my nice hotel room. I'll buy you a car, but I'm not buying you dinner. It you was bad. Car. It, no, I'm just saying, like, because she, she was gonna eat so much. She, she was pretty. It was bad. Like, I, as I'm mad at her, and I feel bad for it at the same time. But like, because I don't think she realized that it was misrepresentation. I, I, I think she was just like, but she has to, right? She has to. I'm gonna have to see these pictures. <laughs> oh, I sent you one. I sent you one of the bit, like the big booty. Remember those pictures? I yeah, sent you? I, I sent. I seen that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's the it's girl. The same girl. Yes. Come on. Oh, Tell me, wings. 
I'm not like like all right. I'm not gonna put her pictures out there for you guys. I'm sorry, but you guys are way too cruel. You're crueler than I am, and I just like. <laughs> yes. it, by the way, I'm doing that motion of like jerking off and then like blah. I, you know, I, I did that to her, so I know what you guys would do. You guys are cruel, but like, <laughs> you just Look have to here. take a word. She's really cute in the picture. She's hot. This is not a, a overweight girl in this picture right here. Exactly. She she sent like an old five year old picture. Like she tricked me. <sighs> Shenanigans. Shenanigans, right? Shenanigans. I can't believe Woody made me admit a uh, uh, blah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's terrible. For the benefit terrible. of the show. Come on, man. Terrible, Woody. <laughs> did you tap that pesky porker? No. No, I did not. She needs love, what too. She needs love, too. Yeah. So let me ask you this question. Did she at least give a good head? She was hungry. She was hungry. <laughs> so she went after it with the lust of passion. The kind of passion you see in like ancient Rome. Yeah, it was bad. What was I going to ask? Oh, oh, Skyrim comes out on November 11th. Is anyone else getting that? I think I'm going to pick it up. I'm picking it up. Yeah. I'm uh like I'm I'm kind of addicted to another shooter right now. Well, to a shooter right now, but uh Skyrim's getting a lot of attention. People are saying it's going to be good. I'm kind of disappointed in Skyrim, to be perfectly honest. How can you be dis? Did you try it? Do you have it already? No, but I've seen the manual, like the book they send with it. So they pretty much put out the entire manual out there, picture by picture. Mm-hmm. And, they're, and they're going back to the same system Oblivion had. Yeah, they're kind, yeah. Of, they're kind of integrating perks into it. I was kind of hoping they go fully into the Fallout system, since it, me personally, I feel the Fallout level up system is better than like the system where you use skills to level them up. But that's just me. I'm really disappointed in that. I'm excited for it. I, I got to meet um, some of the people who made the game uh, from Blizzard or whatever at uh, uh, Bethesda. LA. Yeah, Bethesda, Bethesda. But uh, I got to meet. I don't can't remember her name. But uh, I'm excited about it. I, if I met like somebody cool. from Bethesda, I'd slap them for Brink. So, uh, Wings, I think you might know a lot about the game. How long does it take to do a Skyrim Let's Play? Like, how many hours does it take? Main story it... or entire game? I guess I'll say main story, because I'm worried it'll be too long. 10, 12 hours? Hmm. Entire it's game? Long. Usually when I hear those 80. numbers, I need to increase it by, like, 50%. Yeah, for, like, if you don't know what you're doing, it might take you 20 hours. Yeah. It, if you do the entire game, it'll take you anywhere from 70 to 140 hours. That's a lot. You know, is it clear? Like in Borderlands, for example, a lot of the... Have you ever played Borderlands? No, I didn't. Okay, well, in Borderlands, you go to someone, they give you like a um, a mission to do, then you come back and you collect some XP. A lot of those missions weren't like in the critical path. You didn't really have to do them to advance to open up the next mission. So, um, but it wasn't always obvious to me which ones were really important and which ones were just, you know, run around busy work. Would you, like in Oblivion, is it going to be obvious? Well, Oblivion, no, it's not going to be obvious. Pretty much mm-hmm. the way Oblivion worked was you, you got, you pretty much got, you were pretty much linear up to the point where you got control of your character and then they told you like your next step and then you just had the whole world to explore. Like, well, this guy over here might know the the king and might have something to do with this amulet. And that's all you get. And then you kind of lead from one person to the next. If you don't pay attention to what they're saying, you will you just have to use your guidebook. Is it they 100% write single player? Yes, it's 100% single player. Completely. All right. Well, maybe if I did it in bite-sized chunks, the comments well, would guide me on how to finish it efficiently. I would stream it. Like it be It would be a good week and a half worth of good streaming. Uh, so that's that's a thought. It's and it's it might be a good one. You know, we'll, we'll let the. I don't want to bog down on this too much in, in the show, but it, I'll probably let my subs decide if they think it's a good idea to stream or if they just want all the Modern Warfare three they can swallow. Um, let's talk about that other shooter. So look, Wings, the audio from this will will go on my channel, right? Just like it does every week. Yeah. So we need to be really careful about spoilers. You know, I, I want to. Re- I think Infinity. How about we War- just. How about we just the, stick to the stuff that COD XP had? Yeah, well, I I wanted to start off with the single player. So without giving, giving spoilers anything there. away, no spoilers, no spoilers whatsoever, how did you feel about the single player? Did you have fun? 
Well, I've, I have never played a Modern Warfare single player up to, until this one. And, like, I didn't know the storyline for COD 4 or Modern Warfare 2. And coming mm-hmm. into it like that, I enjoyed myself immensely. Like, I sat down there and I did it in, like, eight hours straight. Like, I didn't even get up. I did the bathroom. Um, I found it a little easy. It's a lot easier than, say, Black Ops was on the single player. It was, I thought, um, in terms of difficulty, it was about the same as Modern Warfare 2 and much easier than COD 4. In, um, in terms of length, like, maybe I did the same thing. And You know, here's what I had to say about the single player campaign. And, and this is probably the highest level of praise. Uh, oh, by the way, I played it on Veteran, uh, for those of you guys who are wondering. Um, for the, the highest level of praise I have for a game is what it achieved. When I got that game, I didn't like. I completely neglected nutrition and hygiene until I finished it. Like I didn't eat. I, I ended up showering and brushing my teeth at like 8 p.m. that day. I, uh, yeah, and, and that, you know, what else do you want from a game? If you sit there and you play the whole thing and and don't even brush your teeth because you can't pull yourself away from it, then uh, then it's probably you're, a good game. You ever played Fallout? No. Oh, that's that, awesome. Fallout's probably the best single player game on the third generation console. Yeah, it is. That is the benchmark for single players. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it, I, there's so much excitement around Skyrim. That's because people that make Fallout is making Skyrim. Yeah, I wonder if it'll be able to take that title. No, not the way, not because it, and Wings put out exactly why it won't. It's because they're using more of an of Oblivion. Oblivion was great, by the way. I got like 250 hours in Oblivion. Yeah. Um. But Fallout's a more addictive, more uh, rewarding system. It is. And, and you get more engrossed in a Fallout system. And it, may, yeah, you, it and you don't have to scale the damn damage down. Like, in Oblivion, I found myself, like, leveling a skill up too fast. And then I have, like, a plus one attribute. I'd level up. And then the monsters get, start kicking my ass because they level mm-hmm. up with me. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. Fallout's really fun. And Fallout has a sense of humor. That you don't see in many games, and it's a dry sense of humor that makes you feel smart when you get the jokes. It's a uh, it's a good game. Yeah, That's like like you cool. see you see like a toaster and a skeleton in a bathtub. It's like, yeah, exactly <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> huh? Like oh, even ga- games like Rage only wish they could be Fallout, and they're just trickling off of Fallout's crowd. Rage but- is a good. Rage is an excellent game made by an excellent company <laughs> with an excellent concept, uh. which they stole. <laughs> I do not approve of those comments. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, yeah. So I, I think I'm not going to go through any special effort to get Skyrim early, but um, yeah, I might go pick it up at a midnight release or something. Hang out, check out the game, and uh, and play it. You know, have something to goof about. Speaking of midnight releases, have you guys ever been the only person at one? No, no. I the portal one wasn't too big though. There were maybe 15 of us or so. Medal of Honor, I was the only person to pick it up. Oh, I think I got that at Midnight Re- No, no, I didn't get that at Midnight Release. I got that because you gave it a positive review in one of your videos. And I, I still say it's probably the best like single-player campaign of a first-person shooter. Medal of Honor. Yeah, I played that in a live stream, and uh, it was good. It was fine. I, I I like Modern Warfare 3, actually. I, see, here, I was going to mention this. In terms of single-player campaigns and movies, I'm the same way. Sometimes I'll watch a movie and think, man, that might be the best movie I've ever seen in my life. And I did that with Four Weddings and a Funeral, as an example. I walked out of that, I was like, have I ever seen a better movie than this? This was really good to me. And then, you know, whatever, a couple years pass, and it's like, really? Four Weddings and a Funeral? Four Weddings and a Funeral, best movie in my whole life? I left the Modern Warfare 3 campaign the same way. Like, is... Is this the best single player I've ever played? Well, I think that's more because of the ending. The ending kind of has got like you, you're you're pretty much cheering towards the end towards the end no. of the campaign. I'm not li- I'm not giving cheering. that away. I was just yeah. I was scared. I was scared. Um, I'm yeah. not. Go- I'm not- <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but it, anyway, I liked the campaign. I liked it, and and uh, good stuff. Yeah, but what do like, you think we, about we, the multiplayer? We can get Medal of Honor's campaign away at this point, can't we? I'm sure. Yeah, it's it's you're allowed to, yeah, you're allowed to post the ending. Yeah, well, well, when Rabbit dies at the end of it, it actually made me cry because it's like, wow, the main character of the story actually dies at the end of it, and it, and it, and the same is certainly the way they do it, the music. It just it just gives you this emotional like high when you're beating it. 
Music's a big deal. Music can be a big deal. And Metal yeah, Honor did music right. If you take any scary movie and mute it, it's no longer scary. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <sighs> what do you think of the multiplayer? Of uh, the WNBA game? Yeah, of that one. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm warming up to it. You're warming up to Is it because you're doing better in it? I, I am doing better in it. I pulled it up to a two four at this point, and I'm starting to understand it a little bit more. And I'm starting to learn the spawns a little bit more. And you know, it kind of takes some of the randomness out of it that you feel when you first pop it in. When you first pop this bad boy in, and you think it's Black Ops, you're just gonna get floored. I know because... that. I it, when I first played it, it it felt like every time I got a kill, there were three more people from my my left, right, and behind. And it was yes. like, son of a gun, you know, <laughs> just constantly, you know, you kill a guy, it was kill, be killed, kill, be killed. Now, it doesn't hurt, that, or it doesn't help that, that I was playing free-for-all. So, you know, you're going to get that even more often in, in free-for-all. But, uh... I can't help I was playing on a two-bar and I couldn't win a gunfight if you gave it to me. That, I, that still happens now and then. But you know what? I learned from Black Ops not to judge a, uh, a series like this on you know until it's released until you get the um like the bulk of people on it because you know we played a, a we, our whole group had two bars and uh, while well, i don't know with the other team i had this theory that they were from mexico or something and that happens when there aren't that many players on it but soon there'll be tons and you know we'll all get better connections i don't know if you guys caught that link i sent out probably mid last week i pretty much said this is why modern warfare 3 is released early in mexico <laughs> What did it say? Oh, it was a link to like a guy getting getting his head cut off with a chainsaw. <laughs> oh god! Oh, I saw that link. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, were there two people who got their head cut off? Yeah, that? one got a chainsaw, and the other got like a, a dull hunting knife or something. Man, oh man, it was brutal to watch. Kyle, have you seen this? <laughs> I don't like watching stuff like that. No, I don't either. Close. I never. So, I didn't watch it, so I guess you're by yourself, buddy. All right. Well, at least there's one man in the show. Here's how it went down. These two guys were somehow related to Mexican drug work, right? And uh, and they decided that they were going to execute them. So they were going to behead them, and they gave each of the prisoners a choice. Now, this is all what I'm reading about it because um, uh, it's in it's in Spanish, which I can't speak. So anyway, they gave these guys a choice on how they're going to die. One guy chose beheading by knife. And the other guy chose beheading by chainsaw. Now, on first instinct, you might think, like, ah, I'll go with knife because beheaded by chainsaw sounds like this gory, like, horrible massacre of terribleness. Well, it turns out, after watching a couple guys get beheaded, um, the uh, the guy with the chainsaw, it was over in no time at all, right? It just and then his head was gone that was it that was the end of that and then the guy with the knife oh my gosh you know he's just he's like sawing it sawing it sawing it and um the guy the, both of them they had their hands handcuffed behind their their head their back so like he had fallen over and <laughs> he had fallen over and you know his, his like legs are twitching and he's kind i wouldn't say he was fighting but he was feeling the pain and the horribleness of getting his head cut off with a knife for the next 60 seconds or so while the chainsaw guy, four seconds later, he was all finished. <clears throat> yeah, so, that sounds horrible. I guess I've given it away, but Kyle, they, without hearing my uh, my description of the Oh, video, I, knew, I knew before you did it that knife is bad, chainsaw's <laughs> good. Yes. It's like, if you've ever used a chainsaw, you know. that. Like, like I've cut... I've cut I've used a chainsaw to cut down a tree. <laughs> right. Um, chainsaw cuts down tree. Knife doesn't fuck with tree. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty much our target. You know, like, you put a knife on a tree, you, you're lucky to carve, yeah. you know, Woody loves Jackie in that bitch. But a chainsaw, yeah. you, know, you, you get some stuff done. You do work with a chainsaw. I'm trying to find this link for people again. Hey, did you see the um, the judge that beat his daughter? Yes, I did. I made a video about it, and oh. I guess I watched the wrong video. No. You didn't see that one, though, because she used well, the I internet was, when I, she wasn't supposed to? 
I watched a CNN video and it, and I re- pretty much didn't watch the video. I watched part mm-hmm. of it and he hit her like three times. And I guess it was like selective editing from uh-huh. CNN. And they they wrote they wrote a different story about it, like he like she had stolen a car or something on her sixteenth birthday. So here's what happened. Um, this happened in, it it happened in two thousand four, and uh, she had the webcam on on her computer, so it was recording this whole event. And he, I think the father who who happened to be a judge in Texas or Oklahoma or something like that, um, the father had told her that she wasn't allowed to use the computer or wasn't allowed to download illegal stuff anymore. So the description in the video said that she was downloading either music or games or something that wasn't for sale yet. And, and that's that. So her father found out, well, <laughs> her father, uh, he, what he wants her to do is lean over the bed kind of doggy style so that he can beat her on the butt with his belt. That's his goal. But she's scared to death because he's like this full-sized man. She's 16 at this point. This full-sized man with a belt in his This is getting hot now. This is getting hot now, guys. Let let me hit you. Let me hit you. Let me hit you. So he starts, like, beating her on her legs. He starts beating her, like, on her arms because she's trying to defend herself. And uh, not defend herself, like, but, like, block the belt as he beats her with the thing. And, uh, you know, he's, he's got these great line, one-liners, like, you know, bend over and take it like a woman. You're being a baby. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's getting hot, right? So, um, uh, anyway, so he, he beat her, and it was just, like, here's the thing. Like, I don't beat my kids. But, you know, if someone does want to spank a kid or something along those lines, then, uh, you know, I... I I can almost see it. Like, if that's your thing and, and you you think a, a spanking or something is within lines, then, you know, whatever. I won't pass judgment. But you need to have your head on straight. You, you need to, like, be in control of yourself. And this guy seemed to be motivated out of rage. And that was where he was crazy, right? He was just beating a little girl. or 16-year-old girl, but little compared to him. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> anyway, uh, he was just you know, beating her, beating her, beating her. And then her her mother gets in the act. But her mother gets in the act as kind of a way to make it end. She's like, you know, here, I'll hit her. And then she'll have had the, the bottom spanks that you're looking for. But that wasn't enough. The dad was like, I didn't get my licks in. So he came back with his own belt <laughs> and, and started beating her some more. But here's where it gets good. That was 2004, seven years ago. So she's like 23 years old now. And uh, she's been holding on to this video for seven years, which in, like, internet terms is forever. Well, her father, like, berated her one time too many over the phone. And she's like, screw it, I'm releasing that video. So she puts it on YouTube, and it goes viral. And now, you know, the the police, uh, it, there's a 10-year statute of limitations. The, the police are after him because it's still within the, the 10 years. And he's losing his job, and the guy is just, like... The guy's uh, his life is messed up forever now. His daughter got her revenge. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. See, this I got a lot. I had to take the video down because I got a lot of flack for him. Like, this is not something you should lose your job over. I mean, I understand you lose your temperature. You, you get you getting a little butt butt cutting. She obviously were doing something she wasn't supposed to be doing. And yes, he went over the top with it. And you could say it's assault, but look at her twenty three years. You know, seven years later, she's perfectly fine. It's I not like he cut her leg off. Again. Are you still going off the CNN version you saw? I, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, is she got any deformities at age 23? Well, all right, yeah. hang on a minute. <laughs> if you had seen him completely lose his mind, you know, out of rage, just beating, his, just beating a kid, you might feel differently. The, the oh, guy I was crazy. That. Yeah, I understand this, but, like, uh, you've met me. I'm by no means a violent person. What was she wearing? She's and in her pajamas. Like brown panties, maybe. Maybe something a little, little silky. Uh, the, 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 <laughs> fact that she had, the fact that she has a disability means very little in this case. This is a case of right versus wrong. You know, the, does somebody that gets beat without cerebral palsy, are they, you know, less innocent than somebody that beats with it? I mean, obviously, you know, the media is going to play that up with, but her being disab- disabled needs to be thrown out the window. Um, it is. Do if you she beat was your mentally or disabled, it'd be relevant. But cerebral palsy, yeah. like, all right, yeah, her dexterity is is damaged. Some cases severely, some mildly. But yeah, yeah, I bet she's bendy. But but the fact <laughs> is, 
yes, he went overboard, but do you, th- does he deserve to like lose all his credibility, respect, and all because he went overboard one time? I don't, I don't know the whole story. This obviously does. Did he do this normally? Was this a routine thing? Did he routinely come in and say, "All right, bitch, I see you playing that PC. Come on, Daddy's getting the belt." Well, okay. Apparently, the abuse was bad enough. His wife left him since then. Well, maybe he deserves what he's getting. But if it was <laughs> yeah, a, yeah, the guy, if it's uh, a, it a one-time thing, I don't see. I don't see think it should be reacted like this. You know, everybody makes mistakes. Yeah, the, the but this guy, he uh, he deserved his beating. This guy deserves to get what he gave. That that was you know I'm, I'm, you know as a matter of fact, fuck him. I'm sitting here. I hate cops, and usually judges are right there with cops. And this goes to show that fucking people that have power fucking abuse the shit. You know why he beat that girl? He beat that girl because he knew he could get away with it, and it backfired in his face through the power of YouTube. You guys have, win. Have you guys seen the video of, um, it's, I don't know the exact areas, but it's like a Florida uh, sheriff's deputy pulling over a Miami police officer, put him in handcuffs and arresting him for speeding. Yes, yes. The, what, the... What, what, what video? Oh, so do you want me to tell the story? Please, go ahead. Want... All right, so um, there's a, a state policeman, a uh, policewoman, I should say, driving on, I don't know, I-95 or something like that, some major superhighway by the looks of it, and she gets passed by a Miami police car going 130 miles an hour, passes her like, like you know, she's going still. And um, so she, anyway... She gets on the gas and she starts following the guy. She follows, 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 and she catches up to the uh, to the Miami police officer. Well, he won't pull over, so the cop is you know following, following, and the guy's changing lanes. He's ducking in and out of traffic, and uh, the state cop just keeps on chasing the Miami police officer, who clearly thought he was above the law. Anyway, uh, after like she brings in more police, and and they start all like chasing and stuff like that, and. Uh, um, eventually the Miami police officer pulls over and he's like incredulous that he could be pulled over. So, um, uh, they, uh, eventually he pulls over and she starts cuffing him and he's like, Oh my God, the cuffs are not really necessary. And she says, this is not the first time you keep doing this. And you know, we never catch you. We never catch you. And now you're caught. And, uh, and, and she, yeah, she handcuffs him. She throws him in the back of her, uh, of her own cruiser and takes him in. She says that she wasn't sure that that car wasn't stolen because it was driving so irresponsibly. And, uh, um, it was just badass. And the guy's excuse for, uh, you know, going 130 miles an hour on the interstate, he was late for work. Like, Really? You know, does that make it okay? Do you get to be, you, go, you know, he didn't have his lights on or anything like that. He was just driving 130 miles an hour on the interstate in a, a Miami police car so that uh, he could get to work a little bit sooner. She's a legend. She is awesome. I can't believe she arrested another cop. Like, to me, it seemed like the, uh, I don't know, like there's this unwritten rule between police that unless it's a felony... Laws don't count. They don't apply to you. You can park anywhere you want. You can drive as fast as you want. Hell, you can drive drunk if you want to and you're a policeman. You can beat somebody up. Simple assault. That's cool. We're both cops. It's all right. You get into a traffic accident. It's not your fault, baby. We know. You're a cop. You're a cop. It can't be your fault. But uh, this is a case where he got what he deserved. And she, ch- she charged him with like racing on the highway or something like that. You know what I'm going to start doing? I'm going to start fucking carrying a camera with me. And every time a cop passes me while I'm going five miles over the speed limit, I'm just going to videotape it and put it on YouTube. Oh, that'd be a good one. Just make sure you get their like, plate <laughs> number. Yeah, or even better, you follow them to where they're going and get their badge number. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like This guy is clearly speeding. I'm going to have to give the uh, phone number out and his uh, plate number. <laughs> oh, sh- Woody, should I tell the story about um, about me getting pulled over? Oh, yes. Yeah. That was the other good story. Yeah, yeah. All right. So <clears throat> I'm um, I'm driving to, to, uh, to the airport to pick up my friend from the airport, and then we're, they were both going to, uh, to Florida to buy a boat. And uh, I'm in my new car. And uh, I I don't have a tag for it yet. I've got a, I've got a temporary tag because I'm getting a vanity plate. And uh, so I'm driving along, and I had I've got my my pistol um, by my side. It's like stuck in its holster. And a truck driver saw it, 
and he called the um, he called the police and told them that I was waving it around. Wait, wait, did you? I thought you handed it to someone else in the car. They wanted to see it. No, 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 no. I had it was it was there was one sitting in the passenger seat. There was one in its holsters that like is between the center console and my seat. Okay. So I I wasn't waving it around by any means. So I get so I see this cop kind of pulled over in the median. Like I figure it's a speed trap. So I go past him and he pulls it out and then another one comes off the on ramp. And so these two sheriff's deputies pull me over, and they start approaching my car from the left and the right with their hands on their weapons. So I've got, I've got all the pertinent information, you know, my carry permit, my driver's license, and my insurance in my hands with both my hands on the wheel, you know, when they get up there. And they're like, he's like, come on out of there, and if you touch that gun, we're going to have some serious problems. I'm like, I'm not touching the gun. What do you think I am? <laughs> What's so I come with? out of there. Uh, Georgia. I'm still in Georgia. So I come out of there. Get to the back of the car, and he, and he explains to me the trucker said that I was waving it around. I'm like, no, no, I'm not waving a gun around driving through traffic. I'm not crazy. And, uh, and he's like, where <laughs> he are you going? Know you're I'm like, crazy at this point. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm like, I'm driving to Florida to buy a boat. I, I was like, that, that one by my side is mine. I carry it all the time. The, uh, the 9 millimeter in the passenger seat is my buddy's. I'm picking him up from the airport. It's his. I'm returning it to him. Obviously, he didn't want to fly with it. And uh, he said, are there any other guns in the car? I'm like, Probably, but to be honest with you, I don't know. Um, there's lots of guns in my car. If I had to guess, I, I would go with lots before I went with none. So like, <laughs> so he's like, "Well, can we search the car?" And I'm like, "Yeah, feel free. There's nothing illegal in there." I was like, "I was like, there's a check in the passenger seat. Don't, just make sure you don't lose that." And there was. There was a cashier's check for a, a fairly large amount of money because it's for the boat that I'm buying. And uh, so imagine the scenario, if if you will. You find a 25-year-old man in a brand-new $40,000 car with a title sitting in the back. There's a bank receipt sitting there that shows the, the amount in his, in his bank account. There's a 25, and, and by the way, 000... we're talking about FPS McDuck's bank account here. Yeah, yeah. There's, <laughs> there's a large cashier's check sitting there. He's got five, count them, five handguns in the car with him. And he says he's going to Florida to buy a boat. What do I sound <laughs> like to you? <laughs> a meth dealer? I don't know. I sound like I'm running cocaine. I'm fucking Pablo Escobar, all right? <laughs> so so it takes him about 40 minutes to run my car, make sure it's not stolen, run me, make sure I don't have warrants, run all five of my guns, and uh, and figure out that I'm up on the up and up. And then they play with my guns for a little while and let me go. Oh, yeah. That's, so it was uh... funny. It was uh, It was funny. I was just thinking to myself, like, what if, what if someone like, asked, cuff you or make you? Sleep? No, no, no. I just sat on the, on the uh, hood or like, what did they do um, with you? Well, I put my hands on the back of the car and he like felt my pockets to make sure I didn't have any more weapons on me. And then after that, I just kind of stood there. And then when they searched the trunk of my car, I sat on the guardrail. But they weren't they weren't overly aggressive in any way. They they made sure they protected themselves, and that's about all they did. But they weren't rude or like. You know anything like that? They it just kind of seemed like they were doing their job. I I I don't have any like hard feelings about the whole thing. I told him after it was over. I'm like, it sounds dumb, but I'm glad you pulled me over. I'd like to think that you're pulling over people when you get a report they're waving guns around. Kiss so, ass. Come on. I mean, what do I have to gain from that? I'm serious. Like if 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 they hear somebody's waving a gun around and they just ignore it, that could be some psycho riding down the road. But it was just me. So you, it's not some psycho. It's this psycho. Yeah, this particular psycho, who's our psycho, guy on our side. So we're absolutely, good to go. Good to go. But uh, but right. that was a fun trip. Yeah. The, so, the, I think I think the stream wants to see that the the NBA game. <laughs> <laughs> Can you flash it? Hey, let me let, before you do that. Let me refresh because honestly, I want to see it too. Let me refresh the page because that mine was frozen. I. Uh... I'll have to do it again. Oh yeah, I oh, saw it. Catch that's it? how much yeah, that's how much lag there is. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. See, if I were you, I'd be such an asshole. I'd sit there and read the like manual like the whole time and just <laughs> and just like every time we ask you a question, just be like, I'll be within a minute. <laughs> you know what I was gonna do? I was gonna have it on the TV behind me and act like I forgot it and just walk up and turn it off like at the start of the podcast. <laughs> oh, dude, you t- you so should. <laughs> I, it wouldn't be hard. That would have been funny. But. It's uh, I wish I had it. I I, bri- I tried bribing a lot of people in person, and they weren't up for it. This one guy was just like, he said he said it would take seventeen seventeen thousand dollars, bro, seventeen grand. That's what I make a month. 
I'm like, dude, if you're making 17 grand a month working at GameStop, congratulations. Grand a month. Wait a minute. Let me. Uh, let me check I'd be hard pressed to believe that a year. <laughs> yeah. Let, 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 um, hold on. It's close to 200 grand. 204 thousand dollars a year at GameStop. Yeah. I need Is to go it? fill me an application out. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, exactly. My buddy's like my buddy literally pulled out like three grand in cash and is like counting the bills out. He's like, "We want that game now." That's no, like <laughs> you, you, if that was my fat ass, you'd be walking out with that game. Exactly oh, yeah. right. You walk right, out with like a I, I don't get it. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You take three grand cash money and go anywhere and tell them, "Hey, dude, sneak me this out of the back." There, you done. They're like, "What do you want? What national secrets?" Nuclear, <laughs> nuclear physics. Like, what do you want? What do you want? I got it. I got a block of uranium back there. Hadn't even been used. Go <laughs> sneak that shit right out. You got that? Uh, you could have went and bought it at uh, Kmart yesterday, right off the shelf. I've heard oh, in really? Target. I heard that Target and Kmart were both. You know, it was flying off their shelves. They so. uh, their shipments came with sale immediately instead of a street date. Awesome. Oh. And That's all of them. I'm not sure of all of them. I noticed I know. it made the news. Oh. I heard all of them, and I don't believe it. I, I bet that you know they instantly got the word out, and I, I just don't believe it. I don't believe it's out there that widespread. But yeah, the yeah, uh, Modern Warfare Three's out early to a bunch of people. It's it's probably not bad for an Infinity for Infinity Ward for that to happen. I mean, the, the people will ease on the servers a little bit slower, and uh, that'll be that. No big deal. I want you to probably fuck with our opening numbers. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Like when that, like how do you how do you factor that in? Does is that Tuesday the um, opening day for Modern Warfare Three? It is, and but I bet that they do it for the week, right? Isn't that what they usually do? Well, they usually do it for the first day and the and then the week first week as well, and then they do the first month. Hmm. So, what are your multiplayer impressions are, are so far? Well, I think we recovered this. Uh, like yeah, the game, just briefly. The game's a lot different than all the other Call of Duties that you've ever played. Like, if you go into this with the mindset that you're playing like Black Ops or Modern Warfare Two, you're going to get stomped on. That's um, <laughs> it, it, to me, and I think what you're referring to is something that Robert Bowling talked about too. They, they made an effort in their map design to take away the power positions. I mean, it used to be like. I don't know, uh, Pride Rock or something, right? It's a really powerful position. You can control a big part of the map. In Modern Warfare 3, at least so far, it seems just like he said, that, you know, the, uh, the, the power positions aren't as clear. You seem really vulnerable on them, and it's more about run and gun. Yeah, the, the, the maps are very linear. Like, um, they're almost all hallways. Oh, They're man. almost all hallways. It's like very, very bland. There's like nothing in the hallways. You might have like one barrel sticking over that you can stand in front of. But for the most part, you're pretty much without cover 75% of the time you're, you're in gunfights. Yes, I agree with that too. I, I and, and today I started, you know, managing to move from cover to cover a little bit better than I did yesterday. You know, yesterday I... Yeah. You know, it felt like all my fights were fair and I wasn't getting the results I wanted. Uh, today, I don't know. It was like, all right, this guy will be coming around here any second now. I know, you know, I just got to peek at him or whatever. And, and you know, I, fi- I, f- I found laying prone. <laughs> I just start laying prone. Like, if I see there's guys coming, lay prone, shoot them, walk away. Can, can you guys talk about the colors and the maps, maybe? I think that's, you know, is yeah. it does it look more like Modern Warfare 2 or more like Black Ops as far as the colors? Looks exactly like Modern Warfare Two, but okay. the thing the thing I've had with the maps is they're pretty much all city maps. So like they just fade right into each other. Like I haven't even learned the names of the maps yet because they all look the same. <laughs> I haven't learned them yet because I'm a slow learner. I don't think I knew the Black Ops maps at this point either. Um, but I I think I'm gonna like this game a lot. I, I think it's gonna be a good one. I'm well, I'm starting to get a, a positive vibe from it. So, so that's that. People asked about hit detection, and it is too early to tell. I remember I made a video on Black Ops at like this point of last year, and um, 
I, I remember I said, I found a guy laying prone on a domination flag, looking the other way, and I couldn't finish him off with a clip. And I was like, Black Ops kills are just slow, slow, slow. Well, it turns out they're not that slow. You know, what it was was some sort of terrible red bar type thing that was happening because the game wasn't even out yet. And, you know, the servers and hosts and stuff were all crazy. So, uh, um, so while hit detection sometimes seems a little flaky you can't judge it by now the game's not even out you know it is what what about the sound is it um good are you gonna be able to sound whore um i haven't been able to but i haven't got dead silence yet either yeah i I, when i said the sound was good i meant the sounds are they're crisp i find them to be enjoyable um they did a good job with the sound the uh for sound whoring i can't wait to get ninja i haven't earned it yet Uh, people are asking about assassin you know if everybody's using it it unlocks pretty late so there'll be a lot of people without assassin in this game i haven't opened it yet the um i found that if you crouch walk or aim down sight walk you're no longer 100 percent silent either you can still get sound oh, yeah. in that position mm-hmm. yeah we mm-hmm. saw that at cod xp and um yeah. the big thing is the map size that's what bothers me the most i mean the maps are small like dome and they're mm-hmm. almost most of the maps are about a little bit bigger than Rust. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the biggest map might be Crash size, you know. I mean, the maps are really, really small. Like, you I, I can, you can literally, like, five seconds get from one side of the map to the other on every stage. Five's tight. I don't think I'd say five. But they're small. The maps are smaller in this game well, as a would whole. You say, would, you say out, would you say I'll spawn three seconds to every engagement? That's a good Yeah, I would bet that after you spawn most of the time, like if you're looking for a fight right away, it wouldn't take more than three, five seconds to get one. Every corner you come to, there's a gunfight on it. So you, it you can either that way. You can either wait for them or you can push around it. That's, all, that's pretty much what the game breaks down to. Oh, I have something new. Kill Confirmed might be my favorite game type in COD history. Um, the, the one downside of Kill Confirmed... And, and this might be me being like my play style is kind of deliberate and slow. Um, I don't die much, but I don't get as many kills as other people. So it seems like by the time I get to my most exciting kill streaks, the game is just wrapping up, and I don't get to do the work I want. But that might change. Um, but kill confirmed is a great game type. I like it a lot. It's uh, it it gets you out of your camping spot because you have to go collect those things. But it involves a certain like you know game smarts because. You know, the, the, those dog tags dangling out there are a lot like a care package dangling out there. You know, it. <laughs> you know someone's coming for it. You know they want it. You know you want it. And, and it's all about, like, trying to get to that part of the map. They're trying to deny you that kill. You're trying to go get that kill. And, uh, and it's just, like, pushing you out there to go get it. Uh, as a YouTube commentator, I like it because the um, the games are a little shorter. Like, there's a lot of games that run between... Like TDM length, you know, three to seven minutes. And uh, whereas domination games always seem to go like 10, 12 minutes long. So so there's that going for it. Kill Confirmed, I like a lot. Um, the other new one, which I don't know if they've even officially announced yet. That, that might be a spoiler. But I haven't played it, so I can't say. So, uh, oh, yeah. I got I to talk about the Bettys since I have them now. Oh, yeah, and they've... they've, they've they even put that on their website. Strategies for working with them, so that's okay to talk about. Bettys are going to fucking destroy you. They are. Especially with people that have them. Because Bettys come out so fast. It's not like you gotta switch to them. You just press your right bumper, and it's like, mm-hmm. he just throws it, just like it's a C4. And it, it's active. Like, you can get to a gunfight, fade back, throw it on the wall, and run away, and the guy will come by, boom, Betty kill. <laughs> but, um... On their website, uh, they said that you can hear a Betty, and if you immediately go prone, then you're good to go. Yes, but how many then people do safe. that? I've never had anybody duck my Betty yet. I know I've never done it. Well, I'm not an experienced World at War guy, but it, they they made it they made it seem like a viable option. I don't know. So. I'm never around when they go off. Usually, it's just a bloop, hundred appears on my screen. I like the IMS. That's a kill streak I was I was that I went into the game think it's going to suck, but mm-hmm. it's actually a really good kill streak. Yeah, I <laughs> I put one on a on a domination flag 
and it was awesome. I, I think it kills four or five times. Kills, right? fi- kills five people. Has five shots on it. Yeah, it, and uh, I don't know if you can des- avoid it or not, but it's hard. They, you can't destroy it like with stuns and stuff or EMP grenades. You have to like shoot it with your gun. So if you plan it just a little <laughs> bit off, it like shoots a thing up and it shoots a grenade launcher round down. So you can get multiples. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's it's a cool kill streak. It's powerful. I, I, I'm liking the game so far. I I need to get more time in it, but I'm, I'm having a good time so far. It's a good game, and uh, and I think we've managed to talk about it a bunch without any spoilers. Next week it'll be uh, it'll be released. Super spoiler. We'll be... <laughs> no, yeah, next week it'll be released, so we can say anything next week. Oh yeah. I'll, oh, one more thing I like to say: guns have tons of fucking sway out the out the gate. And recoil, it is, oh, don't you but, think? Uh, that the recoil so much as the sway. I think you're thinking of recoil. It sways so much; it has this horrible shot pattern. The recoil hmm. is actually pretty light for all guns. What? Okay. Good. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it'll be good. I think it'll be good. My biggest issue so far is the. Uh, is the fact that there aren't enough players on it. So therefore sometimes I'm playing like on a what feels like a European host or a Mexican host or something like that. And that obviously yeah. will be resolved when uh when everybody else buys it. My favorite gun so far is the Type 95. Hmm. The the PP90 I'm told is a really really good gun. I I unlock I didn't it next like level. That. Really, I, I unlock it. I need to level up one more time, and I'll have it for myself. But uh, my friends, who have a lot of time in this game already, <laughs> said that it's amazingly good, possibly OP, and that um, uh, when I picked it up, I, I agreed with them. But, you know, I, all I did is pick it up. You can't evaluate a gun that way. <laughs> I think snipers are going to be really hard to beat if you get a good one. Ooh, snipers, yeah. So so Infinity Ward has said that like quick scoping is back. It is back, man. I'm hitting stuff quick scoping. I'm hitting stuff no scoping. And I I don't hit a damn thing. <laughs> so, it's, like, uh, it's like the range is beyond their body. You just gotta shoot near them. It's like Poosh! Yeah, it, it's like I don't know, there's a cone or something like that. I don't know. Someone said they're gonna reset the stats. Oh, I should talk about that. Oh. Yeah, so, bullshit. They said that before. Yeah, first of all, they say that every year, but I have a I have a teaser almost, like a pro tip. <laughs> it's coming. Every year they say they're going to reset the stats, and they never do. I remember with Modern Warfare 2, you know, their last game, in particular, they said pirates are going to walk the plank and this and that, and as far as I can tell, they didn't do anything to them. I'm not a pirate. I paid for my copy. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, they never reset the stats. Uh, Xbox has come out and said that if you bought a legit copy, then, you know, you're you're good to go. If you've pirated a copy, apparently they can somehow tell if uh, if you, know, you have a legit copy or not. So some people are at risk for console bans and stuff like that, but not us. Um, but here's the deal, and I hate to even admit this because I'm... In Black Ops, I probably quit four games last year. I hardly ever leave a game. But in Modern Warfare 3, I was getting crushed on a really bad connection... And Often. while I never do this, I dashboarded. I dashboarded. I did it. And I was, I mean, it just, like, this isn't fair. This isn't fair. I'm catching people running sideways, unloading an entire clip on target, and then they, like, notice I'm shooting, walk over and pop, 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 and I'm dead. So, um, so yeah, I was just like, this isn't, you know, it's not right. And I dashboarded. And then I fired up the game, you know, a few minutes later, and all my stats were reset. I was a level one. I, I probably was like a level twenty-five or so, which is what I am. Wow! Now. And uh, and I lost, you know, all my unlocks, all my pro perks, all everything. So uh, so if you guys um, are thinking about dashboarding, you need to know that you're running the risk of losing all your progress in the game so far. And heaven forbid you prestige and then do it. So. Uh, if you dashboard, I, I, I swear to God, I'm not goofing. You can talk to anyone that knows me. <laughs> you know, it really happened. It, it shucks. I bet Wings could vouch for it. Wings may have been watching me you know, rank up. And, uh, and then sometime late last night, I started over again at level one. Mm-hmm. So uh, 
Uh, they'll probably fix it. It's a bug. Oh, dashboarding is when you, uh, like, in the middle of a game, go back to the home screen on the Xbox or just turn the console off. So, uh, so yeah, it. if you dashboard, which is, by the way, the only way that games end with the host not migrating properly, you could lose all your progress in the game and reset your stats. So that's something to think about. If you need to quit out, quit out normally, you know, and choose to quit and you'll be all right. But if you dashboard... You could lose all your stats. I swear it's true. I'm not making it up. It happened to me. So, that's that. A lot of guys didn't know what caused it. They were afraid that, like, if they rebooted their console or something, that um, that they would uh, lose the, all their stats and stuff. But that's not it. It's dashboarding. So, uh, so yeah. That, it's kind of a neat bug, actually. I'm sort of excited about it. People can't do it anymore. Yeah, but what if you just get disconnected because of your internet or something, or power outage? That that kind of sucks. You and your valid points. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, what if you're, like, about to prestige and your fucking power goes out? Because my power, my uh, my internet flicks on and off maybe three times a day. It. I don't know if internet disconnection would be the same thing. It might be. but um, Well, if it's not, then if you want a dashboard, just pull your ethernet cable, guys. Yeah, Battlefield 3, not the re- not the final release game. The final release game, it's never happened to me. But the beta froze my Xbox several times. So, like, I could imagine a bug like that, you know, hitting people too. And that would be pretty unfair. You know, I had to power, power cycle my Xbox because the Battlefield 3 beta froze it. But uh, that's that. <sighs> so, I'll, I'll be right back. I'm just kind of surprised you didn't get it, Kyle. Um, well, I mean, you know, I'm not going to make any videos of it, so it wasn't like a, there wasn't any real reason to get it. Um, I made some efforts to get it, but, you know, it, I wasn't crazy about it. Yeah, well, we had the connection to, to as many as we wanted. I'm surprised nobody told you. Oh, with well, the, um, well, I've got, I got one that I'll have tomorrow, or the day after tomorrow or something. I'm getting it early, just not crazy early. I could have had it before everybody, but I turned down a business deal. I could have had it two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Nice. <sighs> but um, it's a good game. It's it takes some it, getting used to. Yeah. If if I could only buy one game a year, I think it would still be COD. Now it's early to say that, but um, you that's, gotta see that's that, where I am. You gotta see that Battlefield came under both the Call of Duties. I did. Oh, yeah. I wanted to talk about that tonight. So Battlefield, what happens is, I think you're talking about the Xbox Live rankings, right? Yes. On the Xbox, they track what games people are playing to see what the most popular games are. And uh, (laughs) Black Ops and Modern Warfare 2 were 1 and 2, and Battlefield 3 was the third most popular game. Like, I don't know. I don't mean to be this big hater guy. But the COD killer can't even beat you know, the 2009 the Call of Duty. I mean, I like Battlefield. I do. Like, I, I think I'm the only guy that posts the shit that's a mainstream commentator. Mm-hmm. And, but, like, that's pretty sad, you know, that you don't you don't even beat, you know, the guy, the two-year-old Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. It's, I, I stream it. And everybody is like, you know, boring. I see. Boring, <laughs> boring. Change it. Play Black Ops. Play Black Ops. I'm like, you guys, you know, you did a poll. Put a new poll up there, and Battlefield just gets blown away. You know, they have an interest in Battlefield. They want to see it, and then once they see it, they're like, nope, this sucks. You know, I, they don't want any part of it. So uh, that's the same thing happened when they put their demo out. When they put their demo out, you know. People treated I know, oh shucks I called it a demo. People treated their beta like a um, uh, like it was a demo, and a lot of guys sort of lost interest in Battlefield once they got a chance to play it. And as I live stream it, a lot of guys lose interest in Battlefield once they get a chance to see it. So that's uh, that's the way Battlefield went out. <laughs> you know, I remember in the in the ramp up that. Um, like Battlefield was like, we're the COD killer. We're going to get COD. You know, we're going to take those guys down. And the Call of Duty guys were like, you know, that's nice Battlefield. And I, I was kind of impressed. I was like, this is cool. Um, you know, they're, uh, they're treating Battlefield with a little bit of respect. They're nice. Now I realize 
it's because like 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 let's say I was a basketball player and uh there was some, you know, well meaning spirited kid with cerebral palsy saying that he was gonna kick my ass in basketball. I would treat him the same way. Like, you know, Timmy, you're a really sweet guy. Good luck to you. You and I, we're gonna go for it. <laughs> and and but in reality, I know Timmy over there from, from South Park's not gonna beat me at basketball. And that's exactly how it went down. Uh Yep. You know, Battlefield didn't even beat Modern Warfare 2 in terms of uh, usage. So, there it is. And, but you'll still have people like, oh, you guys just don't know how to play the game. Or the what, guy's what? like, oh, you, should, you gotta play it on PC. Let me let me throw these facts out to you. Xbox has twice the amount of users as PC does on yeah. Battlefield 3. And it still yeah, came exactly. in. That's number four. That's like telling me, yeah, that's like telling me I don't know what I'm talking about with basketball when you play WNBA. Like, no. Get out of here. You know what you're talking about? <laughs> Has twice as many users and, and six times as many paying users. <laughs> uh. yeah. Call of Duty's a better game. It's a more fun game. It's an easier to play game, and obviously, it's a more popular and better selling game. Yep. Fuck it. Fuck it. <laughs> he said it, guys. Just, That's just own it. Swallow that down, just like a fat whore. <laughs> I see somebody tweet out a video that concerns you, Kyle. Ooh. His name's I Peter. I Let's, don't know Peter. Does it ring any bells? Nope. Well, I, I seen I seen somebody. I think it was Woody tweet out that Peter was swimming in gold coins. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome. So so what happened is he's talking about Peter Griffin, and uh, Peter Griffin gets a ton of money and buys a vault and fills it with gold coins from Family Guy. And uh, then he, he hops off a ladder and wants to dive into the gold coins, just like Scrooge McDuck does. And then as he hits him, boom. All of a sudden, like, his leg is broken. There's bones sticking out the side of it. He's like, yeah. oh, my God, gold is not a liquid. It's really a bunch of individual hard metals that form a solid surface. <laughs> and he was in pain. It was outstanding. It was outstanding. Oh. Yep, yep, I saw that one. You know, yeah, funny, Mister Game Attack. You know, I hate to say that, that Cleveland show sucks. Oh, I know, right? I I caught that for the first time in L.A. a couple months ago, and I was like, really? They made a show about the black guy that left the show? I, I he was like, he was always my most hated character, and it has nothing to do with a black. I don't care if it's about a black cartoon. It doesn't. Who's matter. the best character on Family Guy? Best character on Family Guy? Um, it's between Brian and Stewie. Oh. No, for me, I don't even know his name, but Giggity Giggity. Quagmire. Quagmire. Quagmire makes that show, man. I saw... <laughs> How old are you, 16, 18? All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw the best image of Quagmire in the world. He's like in his house looking kind of exhausted. And you know what Quagmire looks like, right? He's kind of rail thin or whatever. But he comes out of his house and his right arm is like built up strong like Popeye or something. <laughs> and you know what causes that. That was, uh, yeah, good old Quagmire's been working it on his own. I have a high school story. You want to hear it? Yes. Cool story, bro. So I have a friend, Brian. And uh, ex-friend, whatever. But he uh, he was going through puberty. He was like, I'll say, 16 years old. And he was one of those guys that like instantly kind of bulked up and got really strong, right? You know, he didn't lift weights or anything. But some people, they just hit 16 or so. And all of a sudden, get that, like, you know, God-gifted muscular body that, that for some reason they just won the genetic lottery. So uh, um, so he's, he's flexing. And he... he uh, he does this thing, and there's a muscle, like sort of, if you look at your elbow, it's like the hairy part on the on your arm, and it formed this lump on your uh, on his arm. And he's like, do you guys have this muscle right here? And it's this, you know, sort of lump on the side of his elbow. And we all look at our arms, and we're like, what? No, we don't really have that. And... Uh, and, you know, he flexes it and he's like, look, it's on my, my right arm, but it's not on my left arm. And it's just, it's big, it's strong. It's like there's a golf ball on the hairy part of his, uh, on, of his arm right by his elbow. And then my other friend, now we lived in Ocean City, New Jersey by the beach, is like, oh, I know what that muscle is. They call it the sailor's muscle. And he's like, it's used when you do this. And he starts doing this, like, motion, like, of pulling rope, you know, on... Uh, 
he starts doing this motion of, of pulling rope like a sailor would, you know, to pull the rope down to raise the yeah. sail or whatever. And uh, and just with that, with seeing the motion, he turns ghost white. His eyes open wide, and he tries to uh, to change the topic. So yeah, dude, this guy <laughs> had totally built up this wanking muscle, and uh, and it was showing it all to us, not realizing uh, why he built it up like he did. So yeah, what a beast. <laughs> that's funny yep yep <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of trying to think of a, how, how does that work I masturbation no no like how I figured like it out early elbow. on how does it work I, I think I guess I, use, I guess I use a different method than you guys <laughs> I'm a little nervous about where this is headed <laughs> I use a back. I use a backhand method. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. Oh yeah. What I, do I you never mean? can get down that little fist pump thing. Like you know, you see like the porn stars do it. I just never, I never could get in a groove and make that feel good. Hmm. I, I, stop. So you use a backhand method? Yeah. Like with my th- my f- my thumb on my forefinger and like had the fingers going out. All right, be right back. Be right back. <laughs> <laughs> No, Kyle. That's, I'm not list. I'm not picturing. No, be right back. Grab a drink. <laughs> be right back. Fuck that. No, fuck. Wait. I'm gonna tell. I'm fucking shit. I'm fucking <laughs> Flawless victory. <laughs> oh, mission accomplished. Virtual fist bump, baby. <laughs> you knew exactly where I was going with it. <laughs> He's like, no, hell no. Tell me more. Tell me more. That's uh it's one of my favorite moments in PKA. Make Kyle uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, he better get a shot of straight vodka for that one. So Wings man, you doing stuff other than Call of Duty on your channel this year? Uh, hard to say. Mm-hmm. Like, I know last year it burnt me doing something other than Call of Duty. Like, it really but, hurt my growth. Now, do you think it hurt your growth because you did something extra or because you stopped doing Call of Duty? Because I stopped doing Call of Duty. See, I'm thinking if I played COD and, say, Skyrim at the same time, then that might be a pretty good channel. Yeah, I'm probably going to do both. But, like, if I do Skyrim and I put and I post it, it'll probably go on my secondary channel. i really got to get to work on actually getting my... Uh, be my ability to stream up. Mm. It's like I, I, I am a pussy when it comes to commitment. Like I cannot stand signing contracts that are more than a year. Uh huh. And the only thing my 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 telephone company offers is like three year contracts. I'm like seriously, bro. Seriously. My streams have been have been good. Like I'm having a good time doing them. And everyone's having a good time hanging Dude, out in them. I'll tell I you would this. I love the stream. Like you kind of that. that that was like my original goal of getting into gaming is to being able to stream. They um, uh, when I hop in my stream, within a game or two, everybody in the lobby is from the stream. Like everyone just starts pouring in and playing with me. And people, as you know, subs can be good. Usually, a, a YouTube, a, someone who watches Call of Duty on YouTube and gets into the game and listens to tips or games or whatever, or just you know, guys who who are you know following us on YouTube are typically good players. So when my lobby fills up with these guys, the expectation that I'm going to pull off, you know, some 20 KD game just goes out the window. Instead, well, it, it just becomes be, about putting on a good show, you know, having a good time with everybody. I would not be doing that on like Call of Duty. <laughs> I would that, be Sky, Fallout, New Fallout New Vegas, you know, BioShock 2, Skyrim. I'd be playing all the single player games that I can't normally post up, but people would be willing to watch live streamed. Yeah, but I when wouldn't. you don't care about your stats, that's and, the and, thing. Like, I, for me I, personally, if, if stats didn't exist, I, I, I can't stand losing. I can't stand losing at anything. You could beat me in like crossword puzzles, and I would be ready to fist fight. You want to you <laughs> have a you want to have a Jenga match? <laughs> Dude, I would fight you over Jenga. I, I, I'm a Jenga grand champion, by the way. I beat the Canadians back last year. I, I've never played Jenga in my life, and I'd expect to win going into it. I've got I, video proof. 
I had to, like, sort of... I was afraid that everyone would be like, Oh, Woody, you suck. You're absolutely terrible at this game. What's wrong with you? Whatever. And I get that now and then in the stream. But by and large... See, you know, my whole stream are... would be that. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. But if you let that go and just start enjoying your time with everybody, then it goes pretty well. It, it's a good time. It's, uh... I, I, I'm having, like, I look forward to streaming almost every night. You know, it's like, yeah, this is going to come. It's going to be a good time. You know what they did to me last time? <laughs> last time I streamed, I was playing Battlefield. And, uh, every, you know, Battlefield got really boring because, you know, I was playing Battlefield 3. And they were like, Woody changed the hold game. Hold on, hold on, Woody. Game. That came off wrong. You might want to reword that. Uh, Battlefield no, came I mean, off boring is the best because policy. it is. Is that better? So, <laughs> anyway, um, they were in the stream. They were all, like, saying, switch games, switch games, play Call of Duty instead. So, uh, so I was like, but, you know, I took a vote. Like, I, I recognize that you guys are saying this now, but there was a vote, and, and Battlefield won. So I put up a new vote. And just as a goof, I put, do you want to see me play Battlefield 3, um, Call of Duty, or Bacon? Bacon being, like, the silly, stupid answer that doesn't mean anything. And it won. Bacon won. I'm like, what the hell am I going to do for this? So it turns out that, like, our, I keep telling the same story. Our house doesn't store ready-to-eat food. Like, when my wife goes grocery shopping, she just never picks up, like, Doritos or pretzels or uh, potato chips or, or things that you can just, like, pick up and eat. Um, but in terms of ready-to-eat food, there are these, I guess what I'll call bacon strips or something like that for the dog in the pantry. So I, I like fruitlessly open the pantry hoping there's something I can just snack on and there's nothing but the damn dog treats and they look so good. So when the stream voted for bacon, I was like, I have an idea. I know it. I'll eat the dog treat. So uh so I brought a treat up and I, and I split it with my dog and then I ate the bacon and that that's not real bacon right there. Like it it was no, no. it, it was like it was like two inches long, right? So it wasn't like I had some tiny well, little... Well, she said... <laughs> it wasn't like I had some tiny little sampling. It, it instantly tasted of dog food and had a dog food-like smell. And then it was kind of gritty. And then it had an aftertaste that just wouldn't wash down with water. And it was it was dreadful. And... I was Don't put asking. bacon. Don't let your <laughs> subs ask. <laughs> Don't let them do it. They'll watch you suffer. But, uh, but it was all a good time. Yeah, it was fun. So yeah, like, live I, ate cat, cool. I ate cat food one time just to try it, and that mm -hmm. shit tastes straight up like fish and ass. <laughs> but it, just like now, the people playing Modern Warfare Three, they're good, right? The people who have the game at this point in the game's life cycle, a week before it comes out, are really into it. So you, like even you, Wings, you don't lead every single lobby that you play. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to hop in it with in the stream, and the thing would fill up with your subs. It would be hard to lead it. You'd get you'd get your share, maybe more than your share, but you wouldn't be able to uh, to lead every lobby. I think it'd be a challenge. Yeah, that's why I, I probably won't be doing that. The other thing that's a challenge, <laughs> and I'm not sure. Some people say stream watching, and I believe that stream watching isn't a big deal, especially in the like in S and D. It could be, but um, the stream's delayed by like seven seconds or so. It's not something I do on purpose. It just works out like that. And, you know, if you're going to see where I am seven seconds ago in domination and divert attention from your own screen, I don't think it really helps you that much. But what no. does happen is uh, they view me like this trophy on the other team. You know, they, <laughs> they, they partially want to win, but they really, really want to kill me. They really want me going down. And uh, so I put on, you know, when I, when I play against subs and stuff, they just love killing me. And that, that becomes like an extra challenge in the game, you know. You'd, now, of course, everyone's trying to kill you. That's how the game is played. But they, uh, you know, I am this head that they want mounted on their mantle. <laughs> and uh, bring it. Let's play. That's how it goes down. I love how the stream is talking about X Charles is Modern Warfare Three already. Oh. Guys, the WNBA game, if you if you haven't told mm. I'm 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 not, I'm not gonna give you the benefit of the doubt. You're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh no, we'll see. Pretty but. much every oh, I'm not gonna do that. Okay. Good boy. So, should we uh do some sort of uh prank call maybe at some point? Let's do that. Yes. 
Do you want to do a Road to Modern Warfare 3 style prank call? No. Let's, let's we can do that. whatever you'd like. We can call someone and just try to make them angry if you want. I want to get an old man that has like blood pressure problems. All right, see, now that's what we don't want, Wings. <laughs> Panko already! We've only killed one man! No. <laughs> <laughs> that, may, that would put us 1-0. and oh. We have a very positive KD at this point. <laughs> it's terrible. God damn it. Um, we got we got to set our hot sides high. Painkiller is like, what four somebody, kills. Somebody point out something cool. Call up a uh, Ford dealership or any dealership. Call up a car dealership. Let's let's talk to somebody about a car. It is nine thirty at night. Not everywhere. De- I'm on it. My de- yeah, yeah. It, my dealership was open until ten p.m. That's- you got to think the people people buy car, the people that buy cars have money. The people who have money have jobs, you know. So you got to work around, you know, normal job time. I was going. I think the idea of the other day was Kyle was like, see if you could get me an F one fifty for free. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you seem like the kind of person that could talk somebody into doing that. <laughs> no, but I can I can do a prank that I've pulled before that is pretty funny. Oh, Kyle, man. Kyle, would you like to buy a 2000 Ford Excursion, or do you want a new car? How, is that a? Is, does it have a diesel in it? I'm being serious. Like, if it has a diesel, I do want to buy it. Honestly, that's not entertaining. But I will check. <laughs> yeah, I've been looking. If anyone out there knows where no. I get a Ford Excursion diesel on the East Coast, let me know. It Kyle, has a gas have- V10. Yeah. See, they've everybody's selling those fucking pigs. I don't want that. I want. I want the diesel. Diesel goes the, uh, forever. The um, I forgot what I was gonna say. Bye, Big Nate. Car. Oh, right. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle missed a video place? opportunity. You know, you bought that new car recently, and you and you pretty much paid in full. Uh huh. I would have did a YouTube video there, and I would I would have went to car dealerships and be like, I want you to wash my car. To the car salesman, I want to watch you physically wash this car before I buy it. Oh, I've I've <laughs> seen it happen before. That's not a that's nothing new. I'm gonna make them do something much more humiliating if they want to sell me a car. <laughs> like, like like trust me, dude. Like nobody has a real issue doing that. I mean, they'll wash your car if it means car sale. If they're making a little money, yeah, I'll wash your car. Like I don't want the guys in the back to do it. I want you to do it. <laughs> Kyle, are you ready to call a Ford dealership? Absolutely. All right, I'm going to mute my mic. Thank you for calling. Your call may be recorded for quality assurance. When you complete your conversation, please stay on the line to participate in a quick survey to help us serve you better. Thank you for calling. Galpin Motors, how may I direct your call? Um, could I speak to someone in sales, please? Would this be for a new or a pre-owned vehicle? A new vehicle. And which type of vehicle are you interested in, sir? I'm looking for an F-150. May I have your name to further introduce the call? It's Kyle Martin. Thank you, Kyle. Allow me to page an available sales associate for you. One moment, please. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for calling up, and this is uh, Miguel Lopez. How can I help you? Hey, Miguel, how's it going? I'm looking for a uh, F-150. I'm, I'm not too far away. I'm calling a couple dealerships. Um, okay. So I'm looking for a, a Super Crew, I guess. I don't know. What, what do you call the ones with uh, four doors? The four doors, that's a Super Crew. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm looking for that. And do they make a Limited now? Uh, yes, they do. Okay, do you, know, do you have any uh, F-150 you know, crew cabs with uh, the Lariat package? Uh, yes, we do. Um, I mean, <clears throat> you know, Galpin is number one uh, dealership in the world. So when it comes to our inventory, we have the biggest inventory. Um, what are you uh, up there a lot, and we have uh, so many F one fifty to choose from. And we have the Lariats with the Super Crew. Um, I believe I even saw a limited one over there. At that I briefly went over there because I was taking a customer to pick out a F two fifty. Okay. Um, well, I'm I'm looking to buy one right now. It's actually. 
It's actually okay. a business purchase. It's I'm looking to buy one right now. Actually, it's it's a business purchase, so I, I'm ready to go ahead and do it. Um, okay. Do you have time to I, come right now? Or? Yeah, absolutely. I've got I've already got the uh, the check made out for my credit union, so it's going to be a pretty fast deal. I was wondering though, it, this is kind of weird. Um, we work at the business we do. I can't really talk about it too much, but it's we do entertainment style stuff, so we like to have a good laugh. I was wondering, all every car that we've bought for the business, we always do this. We always get a piece of clothing from the salesman we buy it from. Last time I got a tie. Before that, I actually got one of the guy's shoes. Um, I was wondering, could I have a piece of your clothing? If we close the deal, yeah, we can work, definitely work something out. All right, because this this time everybody's telling me that I need to get underwear. Would you be willing to give me a pair of your underwear if I come in and close the deal tonight? <laughs> I know it's weird. I know, but but first of all, first of all, do you wear boxers or briefs? There are uh, boxers, pretty much. Okay, all right. So here's what I want, and, and no, no, no funny, no funny business here. I'll, I'll come in, I'll sign the deal, you know, whatever. I, we'll get it done. But I, at, at halfway through the deal, I want you to go to the bathroom and come out with those uh, with those underwear. I don't want like you know you to run to Walmart and like go get me a new pair. I want yours. We'll, we'll work something out. Um, where where are you coming from? I'm just up the road. I'm actually on the road right now. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, dri- I'm driving right now, but but seriously, I- I'll come in and do it right now if you'll guarantee me I can have the underwear. We close the deal. So I have your personal word. I can have your underwear. <laughs> we close the deal. Yeah. All right. So what was your name again? Uh, Miguel. All right, Miguel. I'll be there in just a minute. Hello. I said. I said okay, Miguel. I'll be there in just a minute. Okay. Well, let me get some information for you because. Uh... I'm coming in in just a second. I'm wearing a white baseball cap, and I've got a black shirt on. Okay. All right. See you in just a minute. All right. Bye. <laughs> we should make this a series, man. What do you think you can get him to do to close the deal? <laughs> I'm telling you. He's, he's Dude, a you should go for the wedding band. <laughs> Get your wedding ring, motherfucker. <laughs> oh. I, I wonder if they'll um. Like, it, what if you tried to get them to let you put your wife in the trunk or something like that? Or, or oh, install seatbelts in the trunk. I don't know. What, what should we do next? Hmm. I don't know. We can just call and piss him off. I can just call and make up some bullshit story about he uh he sold me a car last month and he fucked me over. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hold on. You want it to be Ford? Oh. You know what? So that last place was the number one Ford dealership in the world. Oh, they were. Nice. They, they also were. Uh, well, I think you should call up this uh second place also in Los Angeles and tell them uh you know <laughs> try to get them to argue that point. Be like, I don't know. Uh, the other place, South Bay, or shucks, I'll look it up, I'll look it up. If you were to call them and say, I don't know, Galpin Ford said they're the number one Ford dealership in the world, why should I work with you instead? See if uh, you can get them to fight over it. Good idea, bad idea? Maybe. Alright, you want this number? Yeah, I'll do you it. Wanna... Here you go. Are you going to call it? No, oh, I, mean, I you called can... it, you're going to talk. Okay. I'd, l- I'd like to see you... Uh... Thank you for calling South Bay Ford Lincoln Mercury. We will be with you shortly. This call may be recorded for quality assurance. So will mine. <laughs> Good evening, and thank you for calling South Bay Ford Lincoln. Hi, can I speak to someone in sales? One second. Thank you. Thanks for waiting. Your patience is appreciated. Please hold the line, and we'll be right back with you. Thank you, Charles. Before sales department. I, I was now? just, uh, I was just speaking to uh, you there. What the hell just happened? How can I help you? Hi. Um, I was just speaking to one of your competitors up the road, and they were telling me that they're the largest Ford dealership in the world. Um, is that true? Or I thought, I thought you guys were were one of the biggest. I'm not quite sure, sir. I don't know. Do you have a big dealership there? How can I help there? you today? Oh, okay. 
Slow down, Slick. We want. I, I want to get some information before we jump right in the bed. Calm down. You are, are you in a rush? You busy? You want to maybe get somebody else to assist me? How can I help you, sir? You don't sell very many cars, do you? Are you familiar <laughs> with Galpin Ford? Yes, sir. How can we help you? How many cars did you sell last month? Sir, what kind of car are you trying to buy today? What, what, how to, can I help you? I'm trying to buy an F-150, but I wanted to know who I'm speaking with first. I want to know if I'm talking to a good salesman. How many, how many cars did you sell last month? Well, I average about 15 cars per month. You average 15 a month. In this economy, really? Yes, sir. How many, how many cars do you guys put out a month like as a dealership? I'm not quite sure. I can find out for you, sir. Well, that's pretty good. What, what, what do you usually make on the front? Okay, like, one moment, please. Good evening, and thank you for calling. South to Fort Lincoln. Hi, um, you just transferred me to a salesman, but he was very, very rude. He kept pressuring me to, like, I don't know, give him give me personal information, and then he hung up on me. I guess he transferred me back to you. Could I, could I talk, speak to someone else who's maybe nicer? Sure. Okay, one second. There's no way that other guy sells many cars. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'm not buying it for one second. Thanks for choosing South Bay for Lincoln Mercury. Terry speaking. How can I help you today? Hey there, Terry. I'm glad to talk to you. I, they just transferred me to one of your other salesmen, and he I gotta say, he was a jerk to me. He 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 hung up on me and sent me back to the desk. I just I just asked him if hey, you know you guys had a big dealership or whatever and, and he got really mad about it. Really? Yeah, yeah. I was just so I, mean, I, was, I don't know. I was just I was just trying to I was just trying to be, you know, a little funny with him and have a good time and he was he got really mad and said he didn't want to waste his time with me and then he just hung up and sent like hung up on me. Really? Well let's see what I can do for you. Awesome. I, are you the man there? Well, I'm one of the men down here. Alright, alright, sounds good. Alright, so here's what I need. I need a uh I need a big car. I don't know what. I haven't bought a Ford in like ten years, so I'm not really familiar with the lineup right now. What's the what's the full size car? It is the uh, the full size car in the Ford is a Taurus. Okay. Okay. So did that replace the Taurus? That's Taurus. Okay. Does that replace the 500? Is it still sitting on the Volvo? Is it still sitting on the Volvo chassis? Yes. Okay, awesome. Do you, do you have it available with the uh, with the you know the automatic transmission that's you know basically a uh, uh, it doesn't have gears. It just constantly adjusts to the you know the speed and the torque and everything. Uh, six speed automatic transmission. Oh, okay. So they went to the six speed. Okay, cool. Um, right. How big's the trunk right. on it? Because that's my main issue. Is like in my business, I need a really really big trunk. The trunk is pretty big. It, I, I couldn't tell you in, in width, but I tell you what, you can probably put a, a couple golf clubs in it. How many bodies do you think could fit in it's there? A, well, if you let the seat down, so you can let the back seat down in it. I would probably say from when you open the back seat up, probably three, four, maybe. <laughs> All right. So Straight up see, and what down. I, what I do is I like to run down to Mexico and uh, pick up a few, you know, associates of mine. And so I like to bring them back across <laughs> the border for a fee. So it's sort of like I'm running a taxi service, um, I guess you could say. So I need to be able to conceal as many people in the back of the car as possible. You mean with the back seats down or with the back seat closed? Oh, we definitely want the back seats closed. I've, I've went through that before. If, you know, if they catch me with my passengers in there, there's going to be, well, there's going to be another incident like last year, and I don't want to kill nobody else. So, <laughs> it's, um, do you have about three? Yeah. All right. Three. Maybe That'd three, make... maybe three. Shit, I could have that car paid off in a few days then. I get, I get a grand of I get a grand a passenger. I get more, you know, it's, it's a dirty business, man. You can haul people for a grand a person, or you can haul a little bag of, you know, <laughs> some of that, you know, and you get, you get 10 times yeah. as much. It's a messed up business. Do you have the car in black? Because I wanted something nondiscreet. I got a black one. All right. How fast is it? Like, if you had to get away from somebody real quick, <laughs> is it, does it have good acceleration? I mean, I know it's not a, not a Mustang, but. Well, you know, you, you, know it, you can get one that's a, that, that's an EcoBoost. All right. Oh, I definitely want EcoBoost. It's, it's got 350 horsepower. 
Oh, does it? 350 in that thing. I could probably trick it out a little bit. Oh, man, that'd be great. What's the uh, what's the sticker price on one? About forty four, forty five thousand dollars. All right, that's not a big deal. Um, you guys take cash. <laughs> of course, we take cash. So if I brought cash in, we could work something out tonight. Absolutely. All right, let me ask you this, and this is just between me and you. You know, we don't need to talk to a sales manager or anything. I got I got forty two thousand cash right now, but I got a little bag of some, you know. <laughs> some of that you think i could maybe get some credit with some of that no do you need a gardener because i got two that haven't paid up yet and i'm waiting on their family to come through the payment they're locked down in the basement and as soon as they you know i don't honestly i don't think they're going to pay i think their ass is just going to end up staying in the basement for a while i could hook you up with a damn good gardener no i don't need gardener man Man, I got them. You should see them down there. It's natural instinct. They're, they got potted flowers and shit down there now. And hell, I'm not even giving them water. I don't know how those flowers are growing. Okay. Come on down. I, got a, I don't need a gardener, though. All right. All right. A little indentured servitude never hurt anybody, though, man. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, all right. Let me swing on up there. And uh, we'll see if we can work something out. I, I'm yeah. sure you got a little bit of room my, to work with. Hold on, my man. Hold on. Yeah, come right. on down. My name is Terry. All right. Okay. Terry. You a big dude, Terry? Right. I like a big strong man to sell me a car. I tell you what, last time I bought a car, the guy was crazy and enthusiastic, and as soon as I so he sold me the yeah, car, he went, We got a car deal. He yelled. Can I get can I get some like pumped up enthusiasm out of you? I like to have fun when I buy a car. I'm gonna come in there a little fucked up. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna be a little messed up when I roll up in there. I'm gonna be having some fun. Hey, what? I said, I'm going to be having some fun when I roll up in there. I'm going to come up in there with a couple of my girls, one of my, uh, one of my assistants. We're going to have some fun tonight. Sound yeah. good, Terry? Hey, what? Yeah. I said, I'm, I'm going to come in there. We're going to have some fun tonight with Big Terry. We're going to get this thing done, right? Okay. Okay. All right, Terry, I'll see you in a little bit, man. I can see you a little preoccupied. Maybe you're talking <laughs> to that Mexican I talked to before. All right, man. All right, thank Okay, thanks. See you in a little bit. I hung, I hung up on him. All right. That'll do. That was a good one, man. You know, if he, I don't have better, if he was a better salesman, when you said the bodies, he would have tried to switch you to the Econoline van or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, you got body storage? Yeah. Can I introduce uh, you? I don't know how they're making those plants grow. I'm not giving them any water. <laughs> <laughs> and he was just like, all right, he was good to go. He was good. <laughs> all right. You think that's time it's to uh, to wrap up the show? I think we're at about an hour and a half. Call what? a random, call a, uh, I'm trying to think. You what did you want to do one more, huh? All right. Call a pharmacy. Oh, boy. On my way. Good I'm looking time. forward to this one. Yeah, I want to rip off a previous prank call that I heard, but I guarantee you, like maybe 2% of you have ever heard this prank call, so this will be a good one. Thank you for calling your 24-hour Walgreens. With convenient pharmacy drive through service, arm yourself with answers at Walgreens this cold and flu season. Walgreens flu shots available daily and walk-ins are welcome. Ask pharmacy for details. For the pharmacy department, press 1. For all other departments, press 2. To hear pharmacy out to refill your prescription, press 8. If you are a doctor or doctor's representative, press 1. If you are a patient, Press two to hear from, to use Walgreens Touch Tone Prefill Service. Jesus. Press one to leave a message for the pharmacy staff. Press two to check if your prescription is ready for pickup. Press three to speak to one of our pharmacy staff. Press zero to return to the main. Please hold to speak to one of our pharmacy staff. God, tune in the radio station. Yeah, this is bad. Still, you're telling me you have to go. 
Please pick up soon. Kind of get into the song though. Yeah, it's not bad. Wow. The service sucks at Walgreens. I think we may have to try another one. Thank you already, where we sit on hold. <laughs> yeah, that was ridiculous. Maybe uh, if somebody said Walmart Pharmacy, but we know Walmart's right. Jesus. Walmart down to pick up the phone, son. What are you talking about? I don't know. Sometimes they are. Walmart. You gotta get those go-getters, son. <laughs> All right. Hopefully it's not the same voicemail tree. We'll see. Thank you for calling Walgreens, located at Northeast Corp. To refill your prescription, to use Walgreens Touch, please hold to speak to one of our pharmacy staff. Now we're talking. Better. Yeah, yeah. I'm feeling good about this already. Thank you for calling Walgreens Pharmacy on 7th and Hope. This is Melissa. How can I help you? Hi. I was in there the other day. I was talking to a... Uh, a male pharmacist, I guess. It, is he there? I, I didn't catch his name. No, there is no male pharmacist. Well, who was I talking to? He was. Is he? He said he was a pharmacist. No, there's no male pharmacist here. I don't know who I spoke to then, but it was definitely an employee there. He had on a uniform, but he was helping me. Uh, he was helping me pick out a product. I was I needed a rectal thermometer, and uh, he helped me pick it out. It was not for me. It's, it was for my son. And uh, the issue is it, it broke off when we were using it, and um, and I wanted to call him and tell him that this is a serious issue because we, we had to take him to the emergency room, and it was just a, a nightmare. And I've got $800 worth of doctor bills now. Uh, did he say he was a pharmacy tech or a pharmacist? I don't know the difference between the two honestly and this has been a week ago um it's been but the issue it's i mean at this it, i've been up for the last 36 hours I, I probably i can't even tell you what the day is to be honest um, but okay. but the issue is is that i've got these doctor bills and i'm pretty pissed off about the situation i'm gonna come down there and either get 800 dollars out of him or i'm just gonna kick his ass um Let's see what I could do about this. I could transfer you to a manager or my pharmacist that is my assistant pharmacy manager right now. But you said someone on the sales floor was helping you pick it out. Am I correct? I, it was a guy? It was a man. I mean, it was, like I said, this has been a week ago. He was a taller guy. He had dark hair. And that's all I remember. I don't remember exactly what. He was a I, what? Excuse me? Uh, what did he look like? He was a taller guy in his probably like late thirties, early forties, darker hair. Did he look like Hispanic or? I mean, I I couldn't say. I it may maybe he just had a tan. I I don't remember that well to be honest. But but one way or another, I'm gonna have to get some satisfaction. Are are you the one that would be responsible for? For your employees there, or oh no no no, I wouldn't. I just work in the pharmacy department. Okay, but I, I could transfer to, you to yeah. a manager about this. So yeah, you let could, me do that. Let me speak to a manager. Talk to her. I mean, my store manager isn't here right now, but two of my managers are. Okay, let me let me speak to one of them. Okay, and I'm really sorry about that. Okay. Okay. Give me one second. I need a man. Damn it. Thank you for holding. This is Eric. How can I assist you? Hey, Eric. I was just talking to somebody over in the pharmacy. Um, so here's the issue. I, I've been on the phone with her for a little while. I'll just give you the quick rundown. Um, last last week, I'm going to say, I was in there, and I guess she was, we were confused about the exact title that the, the person that helped me ha held, whether it was a pharmacist or a pharmacist technician or a pharmacist assistant or whatever. 
but a, a gentleman helped me there that works for you and uh, picking out a rectal thermometer for my son. And when we used it, it broke off, and we ended up in the emergency room. We're, I'm still actually at the hospital. And you can imagine I'm pretty upset about the thing. So I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to tell you what I told her. I'm going to come down there, and I'm either going to get $800 for these doctor bills, or I'm going to find that guy and whoop his ass. You're going to actually, the best people to talk to is going to be 1 800 Walgreens. Oh, They're no, 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 take no. Take no. care I'm of all our customers. To- no, I'm coming straight back to that store. That's the store that your store is the one that caused the issue. Are, are you responsible for the employees there? I'm one of the managers, yes. So I get, okay. So if he's not there, I'm going to need to see you. Just how big of a guy are you, Eric? <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? Well, I want to know how long this is going to take me. How big, but you asked me, what was your question? How big of a man are you? What does that have to do with anything? I need to know how long it's going to take me. <laughs> okay. Basically, what I'm telling you is that you need to call 1-800-WALKERS. Basically, what I'm telling you is I'm going to come down there and I'm going to ask for Eric. And then when they point to Eric, I'm going to come over there and you're either going to have $800 in your hand or I'm going to give you the worst ass beating you've ever had in your life, Eric. You ever, you know what it feels like to have a thermometer broken off in your ass? Because you're about <laughs> to find out. Unfortunately, you threatening me is not going to solve anything. When's the last time you had an ass whooping, Eric? <laughs> I think you had him scared. Hey, where were you yeah. headed with that? What, what was the next step on that? <laughs> oh, uh, man. That was Pink already. Have a nice night. Yeah, yeah. Pink already, episode 73. I hope you all enjoyed it. <laughs> Poor Eric. All right. Poor Eric. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, you ever I seen, have you that was that was ripped off from uh Roy D. Mercer, as I said before I did it. Have you ever seen the Roy D. Mercer uh tapes of him doing mm. prank calls? No. He uses this really uh redneck accent and he's like This is Roy D. Mercer and uh and, and he basically that's what I just did, that's pretty much what he does every single time. He asks him, he's like, how, just how big a boy are you? And then the, the guy will be like, I'm about six foot six, 250 pounds. He'll be like, well, hell, that don't scare me none. That's just ripe ass whooping size. <laughs> and it's, and it's, I was hoping that guy was going to say that. I, I was, I was, if he's going to say, you know, how big he was, and be like, well, that's just ripe ass whooping size. That ain't going to take me long at all. <laughs> We're going to slap this thermometer down there, and I'm going to let you know just how it feels. Hmm. We'll take some awesome. videos for my son to see, make him feel better in the hospital. <laughs> oh man, I love those. Roy D. Mercer's hilarious, though. If you guys, it's Roy D. Mercer. If you can't spell that, then I don't know. But like, check those out. They're probably on YouTube. They're hilarious. Good deal, man. Oh god, that was funny. <sighs> I love doing those. So, I don't know, you man. Know I'm psyched. Oh, go ahead, Wings. What are you gonna say? I, I'm, I'm saying I'm still down that first guy's 15 cars a month. Oh yeah. Fifteen, fifteen a month is like. That's a pretty good number to sell. That means like every two days you go into work, you sell in a car. Yeah, it's fifteen is strong. Fifteen is definitely a strong number. It's not an amazing number, but it's a strong number. I mean, you you ain't you ain't crying about that month commission wise. No, you're making at fifteen cars a month. You're probably making somewhere between seven and eight thousand dollars. I would I would say. Dep- depending on what kind of pay rate and how good how, how yeah. much profit. And he, he he didn't have enough enthusiasm to be making eight thousand bucks a month. No, no, that guy was just a prick. <laughs> that guy sells uh, three cars at best. Trust me, like like all the all the good salesmen I've ever known were were enthusiastic, um, funny guys, or they were super professional, um, easy uh, easy to like guys, likable guys. Like none of those like boring like old guys ever got it. You either had to have a sense of humor or you had to be energetic. Like you don't sell you don't sell cars with that attitude. Yeah, see, I would I would, I would have tried to get you in the Econoline van. Mm-hmm. Like, well, come on down. You can bring three or four of your friends. We'll see how many we can fit in the back of this Econoline. <laughs> you know, yeah, I can get it to you a little cheaper than the Taurus too, because you can sell them as a work vehicle. Oh wait a minute, are you saying you're bringing Mexicans over because they're a little <laughs> smaller than Americans? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I say three. I'll be able to squeeze that fourth body in there. <laughs> I'd have been, you know, you can put five or ten babies in there. Just you want to go with the eight box. I don't know. You're bringing women and children in here? Because if you bring women and children in, <laughs> then we can stack up our numbers. Yeah. 
<sighs> People don't have a sense of humor, unfortunately. Oh, man. I think a lot of it has the fear of getting fired. Like, a lot, a lot of these people don't know what to do when you pressure them because it's like, if I say the wrong thing, I could be fired. I mean, and that that's just the, that's a sad state of affairs when you got people that uptight about their job security. Yeah. Maybe it's because where I come from. Where I come from, people aren't afraid of their job security. Well, they are now, but like when I was growing up, my grandfather wasn't going to get fired from his job. He'd have to like steal half the company's income to get fired from his job. I mean, the motherfucking drunk owned the job. <laughs> <laughs> How come people aren't afraid to get fired? Is it because there aren't enough people to hire? Or like, what's going on? It, uh, it's more of a laid back atmosphere, and you're kind of buddy buddy with your boss. In, in a lot of situations. Yeah, it's like you've been you've been there so long that, you know, you'd have to really mess up to get fired. And it's it's like like me, I got laid off from my job. But at the time I was in my job, I was not worried about losing it because it would have took them three months to retrain somebody to do what I was doing and then they would probably quit because they had such a high turnover on it. Yeah. Huh? But the thing is like I don't know. That story just kind of didn't resonate with me. It was like, yeah, you know that job I got laid off from? I was never worried about losing it. <laughs> well, I got laid but, off from because all the, all the orders got canceled. They called me back. But oh. at the time, I was doing this. Hmm. What, what happened is our company, made, we made these transformer cores. And mo- our biggest customer was China. China was redoing their entire electric grid. And they were redoing it with what you call mech glass. It's metallic glassy metal. It's amorphous metal. And at the time, we were booming. We were running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We couldn't make enough of the stuff. And then the banks got scared because the because uh, the housing the housing had destroyed the banks. You know, everybody was losing their home and all. So the banks redone their their like loan qualification. So these businesses in China would have to buy the stuff. Like they would like you ever had to go prepay for gas? Like you got to kind of guess how much it's going to take to fill your car up. Mm-hmm. They had to kind of guess how much they needed, and they didn't like that. So they bought a little bit, and then they waited to use it all, and then bought more instead of ordering it in bulk like they were doing and keeping money flowing in there. And they just couldn't afford to keep everybody going on the the, the supply because they back they canceled like two order two years worth of orders back. They just canceled them. So we went from working 24 hours a day to working three hours a day. Wow. That'll oh, badly run business, I guess. <clears throat> well, it, it was more like we only had like one major customer, and they, the banks kind of screwed them. And it was like, well, we can't afford to pay you guys and keep the business afloat. So you can either take this time off, and we'll call you back when it picks back up, or you can find something else. Kyle, what are you going to do after YouTube? Retire. <laughs> I'm hoping to do answer. that too. <laughs> you hoping to do that too? Hmm. All I'm right. hoping. I'm hoping YouTube will launch me into something else. Because no. I don't want to sit here and do gameplay commentary the rest of my life. But the same aspect, I don't want to go back to, you know, still, still, still the still world again. I opened a what they call a case today at work. To set up my three month leave, like I I called him and uh, I'm like, you know, how does insurance work, right? Can I buy it through Cobra? For those of you that don't know, Cobra allows you, like, let's say your work gives you insurance and it costs them five thousand dollars a year. With Cobra, it allows you to pay that five thousand dollars instead of instead of work giving it to you. You can buy your own benefits and just sort of keep them going. So I'm like, you know, do you have that or whatever? And they and they said no. Well, what happens is your benefits continue through the last um to the rest of the month that that you were gone so she's like when do you want your leave to start and i was gonna say november 15th but when i found out that like whatever month you leave in you get the rest of the medical insurance for free i'm like oh my last day is december 2nd and (laughs) so now i'm covered for the family for insurance for the rest of the year like a boss oh I thought I was clever, but yeah. So so we pushed back to December second, and now I have uh, my health insurance, and that will be my last day at work, which is kind of a neat thing. Hopefully. Congratulations! You can you, you're still at the position you can go back, and it's like I really didn't like my job. It's like fuck this. Look here, I don't need your job no more. 
Stick it up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't. I definitely don't think stick it up your ass, right? Like these are all good people. I didn't, I didn't say that. I'm like, I, I was more like, you know, I kind of got this thing going now, and it's taking up most of my time, and I'm making more money than I was making when I was employed with you guys. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of that thing. I'm like, so um, if you can fill the position, can you go ahead and do that? That's yeah. So I, I definitely leave. You know, hoping the best for all the guys I left behind. That's the goal is not to I burn a bridge. Mind. In case you need to put your foot back in the door. Right, right. But on the other hand, you know, as far as like loving it and stuff, like every so often I'll record like thirty seconds of the meeting I'm sitting in just to show people what it's like. <sighs> yeah, they're like thirty seconds is all they could take. It, it is. Uh, 